So hello and welcome back to All My Art and Soul. Uh, I'm Michelle Holden and the artist behind this channel. And this little video is all about my new tools. So as artists, we just love getting new stuff. So I'm just gonna take you through some of the new tools. You can see them here. And then I'm going to, um, I'm curious to know um, how different uh, some of the tools will be compared to my other ones, like my Catalyst, my other Brer, and um, some of these. And I believe you can see some of them. Anyway, I'll be showing them to you. So, um, I love Amazon. It was here way earlier than they said, especially uh, where I am. So the first set, oh, and, and I'm just using this. Maybe I'll take it away because it's distracting. But we're going to use that in a moment. And because I'm continuing uh, with these tools on our shape series. So stay tuned for next week's video, which is part three. So I'm just going to, I don't know, I'm just going to maybe upload an extra video for this week. We'll see how it goes. So these are not the ones I purchased. Those are the ones I want to compare with. I ordered a set um, of three. I'm not familiar with the brand names of Brayers, but I know I got this one. It is the SD, and you can know it's, you can see that it's well used and also has a few little dents in it from trying to clean it off, but using a paint palette. I probably should use a plastic paint palette. I've used a metal one with a sharp edge in the past, so probably not. It's really smooth, and um, I have abused it somewhat by leaving it in the water to soak. Probably shouldn't do that, and uh, so far I've been lucky. So that's my old one. So here's the new ones, which is much wider, and that's the effect for the big shapes or creating shapes from Brer that I want to use. It came with a much narrower one, as you can see, and they roll nicely. And it also came with this really tiny one. Now, I'm not, yeah, it, yeah, could use some tightening up. I probably need to be extra careful with it. And looking forward to see, to be seeing what this little tool can do. So, we're going to be using just a quick demo in a moment. For those of you who have not um, uh, spent some money on some tools, uh, I I am now as to where I have my collection as built, as you can see um, from the videos that you've watched, but I've been really dying to get a new set. So that, those are the Brayers. Next, and I know that these are called different names. Um, one artist that I know, a mentor artist, calls them color shapers, and I really like that term. Um, they are they f like a paintbrush, but instead of bristles, you have a rubber um, similar to a kitchen material palette scraper, but the end, I'll just put it to where the camera, is a very sharp edge. So in making those edges and really shaping that uh, paint, and stains and inks um, will be very interesting. And then it came, these came in four different widths. So two and a half, two inch, one and a half, and one. Looking forward to using this on my smaller pages or smaller art where this acts like a large, a large uh, scraper and you can use this edge, but I found it difficult to get in where I'm really thinking this will really be cool. So those are the color shapers. And um, I would love to hear um, what in the comments below, 
what kind of tools um, you, uh, not so much that you use new ones that you've tried or would like to try. So, um, because then that'll really um, get us going in um, and, and not spending too much money these uh, in the future for tools that we want to try and what they can do and the differences. So that's what I'm really looking forward to. Um, so we'll just move on. Those are the color shapers. Finally, 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 uh, got an all. Now, um, if you haven't looked, um, and it even, it has a nice oil, you can feel it just, yep, definitely. And there were a set of two and some really, really super sharp ones that I thought, you know what, I really don't want them super sharp, at least I don't know that I do at this point. This is for scraping. This is for poking holes through thicker paper that I might want to uh, use stitching, um, bookmaking, who knows. But right now it's going to be a scraper, a scratcher, and um, whatever else I come up with. Okay. Last but not least, this is the original white tape that I use. It's called XF Tape. Um, again, on Amazon, there's so many different products and I could not find this tape again. So I just went to Amazon Suggestions, other products, and I found, and I noticed that the inside is blank, but they are calling this, and I kept the little tag, um, Artist Tape White. So it's for drafting, tape painters. Of course, it's made in China. Uh, it's hard to get products that are not. Um, maybe we really, we merely might want to share that kind of information. Where can we support our local businesses? But I've looked everywhere where I live and there's no such thing as white tape in any form, artist or otherwise. So um, stick with our yellow, stick with our painter's tape, but here's the white tape and it's slightly narrower. It is, I thought we'd, I might just jump on and do a quick little technical video. It is, almost five-eighths of an inch, or, oh, exactly one and a half centimeters. Okay, so, and I've got four rolls, so this should last. So this tape is used to adhere finished, uh, uh, finished art that's on paper to mats, to, uh, and then sending them all sealed up, um, taping, of course, around with your art journals, because if you don't want uh, another color interfering, um, and I use, I use the white tape for many, many different things. So I've got a good supply. <clears throat> so let's bring back, um, of course, these marks were made with a, my brayer, and I turned it, so I'm just trying to do different things. Um, oh, I forgot. The value scale. So in this other course that I'm taking, um, this is going to be um, very val <laughs> valuable uh, for my color and when I get to the value part of the module. I'm not there yet, and I always wanted a really, really, you know, a professional one so that I can, when I turn, take a picture of my work, turn it into, edit it to a black and white version, I can see what's, what's working and what isn't working, um, white to black, um, without the colors interfering more clearly. So. 
That's what I plan to use this for. Okay, so I had four items come in, and with uh, the continuation of the shape exploring shape video series, we are go I'm going to use um, these sets of pages just to for the exploring stage before I move to um, I love the mid-tone of these I do believe this is a printing paper because it's very thick it is not exactly an 8 by 8 inch and trying to trying to use standard it's eight and a half so I'm going to crop it down to eight by eight because the mats that I have are seven and a half and seven and a half and that would be too too much uh, almost an in, you know a half an inch too much on the edges to crop and then those things would disappear so and I might even if it's seven and a half no I'll go eight inches because then uh, it'll just be a quarter of an inch will be covered uh, once I want to uh, surround it in a mat. If they turn out, if they don't, they'll just be there for um, a resource. So, oh, and how I'm going to put them together with my new tape, I'm going to put them together like so. edge to edge, tape them along the seam, and this would be in the first couple of layers, or two, or three, depending, and then, of course, flip it, let's just do Let's just do a quick demo. I have to trim them down. So the tape would be on this side, and then you would have a lovely four quadrants on this side to work with. And those would be for the very first initial layers. And then once I'm happy with the initial layers, I'll take them apart and then work on them one at a time, but together in a series. So that's coming up in the next video. Maybe this one. Okay. After we do, I say we because I'm including all of you. <laughs> we do some exploring. There was the beginning. And I um, I'm not liking I'm not liking that because there's just too much there. I would like more paint, but who knows? In the future, I could add some more gesso, take it back. And these marks, as you've seen earlier, were all made by a brayer. Okay. Interesting shapes developing already. This was from a couple of palettes of similar colors that I just decided to add on with a brush, a brayer, or whatever. No thinking at all. Making some marks. Carving out some shapes. I love this, the energy of this one. But we're going to start with, uh, since uh, the collage paper that I've used is neutral, black, and with a little bit of a, of a hero color, <clears throat> excuse me, pink, we'll start there. Okay, so this is my shape or my exploratory journal. So we're back to the new tools. I'm so excited. Um, so this is the wider one. So what I'm going to do is, before I go on any kind of, there's the all, I just want to get the feel of these. So I'm just going to use the same color, the same value paints, and I'm just going to use paper to start. I'm going to start with the smallest one. I have never used these before. So I'm totally, totally green. And wow, these are amazing. So what I did is I just dipped it in a little water because I know, um, wow, 
Super for mixing, super for everything. And you can see what I'm doing. Good, good, good. Um, this is paper. So, of course, every surface is going to be different. Now, what would happen if I added a little bit of this gloss fluid? Just to make it spread better? I'm not sure. And also thinning it out. What if I wanted to make a very specific shape? Oops. I'm really loving the control of the edges. You can really get precise, but still, uh, and I'm loving what it does on the paper for that. Say if I wanted to come in and add, wow, you don't need to tape off a sharp edge because I wouldn't want it that perfect in the first place. Now let's see, I know my other artist loves, let's see if we can make some stripes. This isn't dry, but, but that's okay. Across, okay, loading it up in a specific way. Maybe you need, so there's it. I loaded it a little more. Changing the angle. So, I'm coming across. I love the, the mark making ability here. And how nicely it goes off the edge and how you can come back and just make an adjustment. Oh, wow. Okay, so that's the little one. Let's see. And I'll just Dampen that. I don't even know if you need to. I'm so new at this. I'm going to add a lighter value. And. Oh, wow. This is amazing. So that got to dry a little bit. So I'm seeing the potential. You can change the angle, which then allows the thickness of the layer. So of course a 90 degree angle, you know, that's just that's just logical. Wow, this is going to be amazing. So smooth. And when it runs out, I'm sure if I was on a different surface, a canvas or wood, you could add a little bit of a spray bottle, a spritz, which would and you could go really thin. All right. So I'll just put that one to, to the side. And already I've got a, a really interesting piece of collage ready to go once it's dry. Let's try the thicker one, the wider one, not thicker. Now, that was without a dip in the water. Let's see. 
话。Of course, this is paper. Love it. So I can come back and thicken up that line. Let's really utilizing all the aspects of this tool. Sharp but not perfect lines, which I love. Wow. Why have I not found this earlier? <laughs> I love how it swooshes on top of another layer. Okay, now I'm curious, I'm going to move to that sketchbook, my shape sketchbook, and I'm curious to see mm. So, I know it's paper, but I'm going to use my spritz anyway. I want to remove, yes. So you can put a lot or very little. This is so good because this is the kind of mark shapes, thin, translucent layer, layers that I have been looking for for my next, uh, for my big work. And I'm really happy with this tool. And I could be going overboard, but you know what? This is just all exploratory. Now, I know you can't see, but it's picking up all the texture from the previous paint layer, leaving a little bit of a blob, but look how you can pick that up. This is really cool. Okay. Cleaning them up, I'm sure, is very simple. Just wiping them off not letting them soak, not wanting this metal part to rust or anything to fall out. So I'm going to try to be very careful. <laughs> and creating some just random shapes. I want to go darker right here. Sharp edge. So that was a lot of paint, so I can scrape it all off or I can lay it back down depending on the effect. I can also gradate, meaning uh, whatever it is, uh, gradating a value, gradating a texture, 
gradating a color going from one extreme to another in order to guide the viewer's eye in a particular direction. Really liking that effect. So, well. we'll go right off the page. And as I said before, these ones are right edge to edge. Very cool. I think I'm going to try some dark marks. Not with the big one, I'm going to use the little one. And I know it's something that I like. This is sort of a, a mark that I'm discovering that I like to use. Sort of climbing horizontal lines in various distances. So that's good. Let's see if this can make a circle by spinning it around. Not a perfect circle, and I love that. Very cool. Um, a very sharp mark. Hmm. Okay, so those are, and I'm just going to sit them in very briefly in my water at the side, which is right here, and wipe them off. And I'm going to go back to the paper just to demonstrate, just to use up this paint with my new brayers, really trying to just focusing on this very small one. And then I'm going to just score lightly and just see what kind of marks the um, all make makes. Okay. Let's So I notice it's rolling through pretty well. And when, I'm really liking how wide this can be. This is gonna be really great on the jelly plate. Okay. Let's, oh, the little one rolls through the paint with very easily. This is just paper, so I'm just going to, it's uh, already dry, so that probably won't work as well on paper versus canvas board, anything, uh, a much harder substrate. So that's cool. And I might stencil on top of this later on when it's dry. This is just the scrap papers from last week's video, so I'm just going to use those. I try not to waste anything. And I just want to mix up this paint and it's going to be very neutral. That's cool when it slides. So that's unexpected. You couldn't plan for that one. And these will be a background that I probably will use the stencils and the jelly plate printer like I did last week with those uh, pieces, uh, those collage papers that we made. Okay, really liking that. So now my favorite tools are the brayers and the color shapers. I can't wait to try them on work 
which is coming up in the next video. Um, more journal pages, and we're going to move slowly uh, as we get into more shapes uh, to larger pieces and heading towards the canvas. So don't forget to like and subscribe, and thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.